Hey guys, ZCrazyG here, back with another CTR video. Now, with the game winding down and seemingly nearing the end of its content cycle, it allows time to reflect back on the game and the journey we took over the past year. CTR Nitro Fueled is an incredible remake of a beloved classic kart racer that expanded on the original product in so many ways. Though, we still need to acknowledge that it wasn't perfect and that there were some very prominent issues. Because in order to appreciate a complete product for what it is, we need to acknowledge both the good and the bad. So this will be a part one of two video. Today we're going to take a look at five things that CTR Nitro Fuel did wrong, and then in the next part we'll look at five things it did right. But for today we will focus on the negative, because despite being a great game overall, it doesn't mean it's exempt from flaws. So let's take a look at the top five things that CTR Nitro Fuel did wrong. Coming in at number 5 is an issue that isn't really a big deal as such, but was more so a big annoyance for many in the community. This being the promotional tie-in carts, more specifically the Sour Patch Kids and Trident Collection and the Xfinity cart. Now normally promotional items are not a big issue with most games, but due to some incredibly dumbfounding decisions by Activision's marketing team, it just caused a lot of frustration. Now the Sour Patch Kids and Trident tie-in I can be a little bit more lenient with since it wasn't the worst of it. With the purchases of Trident Energy Drinks and Sour Patch Kids Sweets, you'd receive a code to earn the Cove Cruiser, Candy Wheels, a paint job and stickers. Okay, that seems fine, they're widely available food and drink products. However, it was only exclusive to the states, meaning that the rest of the world who wanted these unfortunately had to resort to other means. But it got so much worse with the Xfinity cart, I'm sure this one is still fresh in people's minds. So once again, another US exclusive cart, but this time it was limited to customers of a cable and internet provider. Fucking seriously. And of course, that means only a fraction of the states are going to have this available to them. Like, it was so limited, it was ridiculous. And on top of that, it was just such a bizarre tie-in to have with CTR. The worst part of all these promotional items though is that due to their limited availability, it encourages scalping and people desperately trying to acquire codes and being very hostile towards each other as a result. Like, it got so bad that Canadian guy A, a YouTuber who was just trying to go about his job, received death threats from people trying to get codes. What the fuck? I guess in a silver lining to this is that I did get to see the more generous and kinder side of the community as well, as I was very fortunate to have people actually send me some codes, which I greatly appreciate. But ultimately, these promotions for the most part caused a lot of annoyance and hostility in the community, and in my eyes, that's 100% a fuck up. In at number 4, we have a slightly unspecific concept, but this spot I wanted to address the grindy and microtransaction baiting systems in the game. Now to clarify, I'm not actually referring to the addition of microtransactions themselves. By this point, I couldn't really care less. It's an Activision game with online play. No shit it was going to have microtransactions at one point or another. It's more so the way the game manipulates things to make things more grindy and to entice you to to buy the microtransactions. Firstly, the offline Wumper coin earn rate, though getting better over time, was for the most part still abysmal. Secondly, the pit stop shop system. Having it on a rotation basis made it so that if there was an item that the player wanted but wasn't featured at the time, they'd either have to wait until the random chance that it did appear or spend more in order to cycle through more items to hopefully reach the one you want. And this only became more of a problem as the game went on. Now of course, we love the abundance of content we received, but it's a double-edged sword, as it did fill the pit stop with so much more making it even harder to find the things you wanted. Now people are gonna say, well just play the game and earn coins, it's not that bad. Well the thing is, unless you play the game a lot, then it is quite hard to earn enough to be able to purchase everything. Now, it's definitely nowhere near as bad as other games out there. This is a very common practice in multiplayer-centric games nowadays. Still, I'm sure that many players will agree that these systems were not highly favoured. 
With number three, we're now getting into more of the gameplay focused issues. And the one thing that I never felt Beanox were ever quite able to get right, that being the power up balance. The whole point of power ups are to keep things chaotic and somewhat balanced by allowing players to gain an edge over each other. However, the distribution of these has been broken for as long as I can remember, and Beanox's attempts to trying to fix it have only made things worse, I think. When the game first launched, it was all over the place. People were getting invincibility masks in first place, and it was just clocks and warp orbs up the arse. So when people complained, Beanox decided to do something about it. However, whatever they did just ultimately made online races even less fun. Mainly because the distribution of clocks and warp orbs was made, in my opinion, way too scarce. It was very rare to actually get one now. And the problem is, is that because of the way power-ups were distributed led to most races playing out the same. At the start you have a power-up frenzy, one player manages to come out and launches ahead of everyone. Meanwhile the middle of the pack fights amongst themselves and nothing can be done to stop first place because of how rare clocks and warp orbs are. And it's a shame really because it kinda made races become dictated almost entirely by power-ups whereas it should factor in both skill and randomization. And it's a shame Beanox never quite got this down since I think just one more go over would have fixed this. But alas, I guess it's not meant to be. Coming in at number two is probably what most people would have expected to be the number one problem with the game, and yeah, I can definitely see why. It's the one thing that has been a consistent problem throughout, the sheer instability of the online mode. Now in this remake, online was always going to be the biggest new addition, and the one part that ensured players kept coming back to it to stay engaged. So when that mode is about as stable as a bomb held together with blue tack, you know you fucked up somewhat. I don't think I need to state the issues, everyone knows them, everyone's experienced them. But regardless, the lack of host migration, the struggle of finding lobbies, the lag mid-race leading to invisible power-ups, it's just a fucking mess. And absolutely nothing was ever done to even acknowledge or address this issue from either Beanox or Activision. Though the reason it doesn't quite make number one is because, for all its faults, it was still baseline function. It got the job done, though by kind of doing the bare minimum required. Now as for the number one thing CTR did wrong, well... At number one, following the online theme is the lack of any alterations, additions or changes to the online mode. So since the online mode was still functional, we still played it and kind of just got used to it and accepted it. Though the only thing we ever got to experience was the basic single races and battle modes. That's it. And my god, it got really boring after a while. When your online mode, the mode that people rely on to keep them engaged and playing after launch, does not add anything new or interesting to spice things up, it just becomes so dull and loses its fun factor really quickly. There is so much they could have done here. Cup tournaments, no items mode, online CTR races, team races, but we got nothing. And to me personally, that was the biggest letdown with this game as a whole. It failed to provide a varied gameplay experience in the mode where it needed it most. And it led to, in my opinion, getting fatigued with the game during its life cycle fairly quickly. It's unfortunate because this combined with the online instability makes for a rough online experience as a whole and really does show as the biggest fault the game has. So those are my top 5 things that I thought CTR Nitro Fuel did wrong. If there's any other issues you guys wanted to discuss that I didn't bring up, then do let me know in the comments below. And if you're sick of the negativity by now, don't worry, I'll have the next part of this video going up soon where I discuss the positives, so stay tuned for that. But with that, thank you all so, so much for watching everyone, it really means a lot. Feel free to like and subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care guys.